Welcome to WetPixel Live. My name's Adam Hanlon, and I'm the publisher of WetPixel, and I'm joined today by Alex Mustard, well-known photographer. Hi, Alex. Hi, Adam. It's good to be here. I'm pleased to report I've actually been scuba diving and taking pictures. I was diving yesterday in, in Norfolk. Not fantastic visibility, but great to be back underwater taking pictures. That's great news. Um, and today's topic is going to be about TTL versus manual. Um, oh, thank you for that hot potato. <laughs> um, actually, for me, it's not a hot potato. It's a very simple one. I shoot almost exclusively manual. And I do that not to be big or clever. I do that simply because for me, it's the best way, the most efficient way for me to produce outstanding underwater pictures. And I guess if this is going to, this little talk is going to be about anything, it's going to be hopefully to convince you that this really is the way to go as an underwater photographer. That said, all of these features on our cameras are there for tools for us to use. And although I don't use them much, it's good to have those tools and to make use of them if they help you get your pictures more easily. Yep. And I think certainly TTR can be valuable for me in two, two times. Um, the first is if you're a relatively new underwater photographer, it can be a really good way to boost your confidence and make sure that you're getting some shots in the bag. If you're doing something that you may be unsure of, it can be a really helpful um, process um, to use. The second time is particularly for more experienced photographers, if you're doing a dive where it's going to be difficult to adjust your strobes, it might be a very deep or challenging dive. Particularly, typically for me, I might use it when it's a very cold dive and I know my hands are going to use, lose all their dexterity very early in the dive because they're cold or I'm wearing very thick gloves and I don't want to be fiddling around with, with, with strobe powers and that sort of thing. Those might be times when I use TTL. But I would say 99% of my photos are taken using manual flash. Yeah, You're going to ask now, Adam, what is TTL, aren't you? <laughs> I, I think that's probably the next thing. Yeah, I, I think just to echo what you say, I think definitely cold, big gloves, so on and so forth, TTL as a place is, is definitely a, a call for it. But go on then, how does it work? Um, well, I think, um, well, TTL, I guess the, the, certainly I came across it, and I think that's really where the, the acronym came from, is TTL stands for through the lens exposure. It's a way of the camera controlling your flash exposure by looking at how much light the flashes are producing and how much of that light is bouncing back off the subject through the lens during the exposure. Now, in the days of film where it got its name, actually that, it, that measurement was going on while the camera was taking the photo. Mm -hmm. Inside the, the camera, there was actually a separate sensor that would measure the amount of light bouncing back off the film plate. And that's how it would control. And when enough light had been exposed on the subject by the flash, the sensor would record that and turn the flash gun off. And that's how it simply worked. Sure. With digital cameras, um, it works slightly differently. And it usually involves the camera firing very, very short, fast pre-flashes, so fast that usually we can't see them, um, and then measuring those just before it takes the picture. And this all happens in the blink, you know, very much in the blink of an eye. You can't see the camera doing this usually, sure. but that's how the cameras do it. And the different camera manufacturers call it slightly different things. It might be ITTL or STTL or DTTL, but they're all flavors of this kind of pre-flash auto exposure where the camera takes a picture, uh, takes and when you take press the shutter the flash does a couple of pre-flashes or one pre-flash the camera evaluates how the light is hitting the subject and then from that calculates how much flash to give to the subject and in simple situations it works very well but the downside of TTL is that if you want to create really outstanding artistic underwater pictures chances are your camera circuitry is not going to figure that out and as a result, your TTL is going to get it wrong just when you want to start creating the really interesting pictures. So TTL, I think, works best on nice, simple scenes, a bit like I, I am here with me nice and big in the frame, clearly a subject in a background. The TTL will be able to light the foreground and realize it doesn't need to light the background and do a pretty good job. As soon as the subject is maybe more, it, more smaller in the frame or is slightly more unusual, in other words, a more eye-catching and interesting image, that's when TTL starts to fall apart. And the difficulty with using TTL in those situations is as TTL starts getting wrong, it becomes very difficult for you as a photographer to start doing anything about it. If you try and dial in any compensation, you start chasing, you're chasing a moving target. You, you dial in some compensation to try and fix the TTL. And then the next time the TTL gets it right and your compensation makes it wrong again. And that's why manual strobes work so well because your strobes do exactly what you tell them. And the good thing about being an underwater photographer is you take nearly all your pictures from the same distance away 
and therefore your strobes are nearly always on the same power. And I think what worries people when they start trying to use manual strobes is that they're worried they're going to be constantly adjusting their strobes. And in reality, you don't have to because there's written because you take the pictures from nearly always the same distance and it's very quick to get the strobes dialed in. And then they just give you that consistency of, of repeatability. And then when you want to get creative, your strobes do exactly what you're telling them. And that for me is really why manual works so well. Just to add to what Alex was saying about this. So, so the idea is that obviously when the camera camera circuitry creates pre-flash and this is then transmitted via your strobes i'm not sure if that was altogether clear so so uh, the sorry. strobes will produce a pre-flash um which will then appear on the subject the camera will then meter that and then will adjust the potential um, strobe output according to what it finds so essentially the the camera is controlling the 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 amount of light falling on the subject by emitting it by measuring what it happens with a little flash beforehand um, and and so so the 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 idea obviously now is that what we're controlling is important to bear in mind is the light on the flash now once we introduce the flashes are actually controlling themselves in effect um, and we also have the balance of control on the camera it becomes really really difficult to know which bit of exposure is being affected by our adjustments so so just to echo what what alexa said really it's really really hard to diagnose in ttl why an image is not working so the advantage of switching your camera your strobes into manual is that as you turn it, turn them down you see straightforward the effect and you can adjust your camera settings as well to to suit that particular effect so it's a it, it really is important about for this idea of diagnosing what is what's working what isn't and i think to some extent i, I agree, disagree a little bit with alex in that i the beginners using ttl one of the problems is it becomes almost like a bit of a prop and people end up using TTL because they've had results using TTL. And sometimes what it's a good idea fairly on in, early on in your diving career is to switch the TTL off, go manual, and you'll pretty rapidly discover how straightforward it actually is to do. It's much easier than most people think. I think that's an important point to make. Um, it, it really isn't a difficult process. Yeah, and I think it, it, it all changed when cameras, you know, 20 years ago almost when cameras or 15 years ago when cameras switched over from being film cameras to digital cameras mm. because on film you didn't have that handy LCD screen on the back of your camera yeah. and when you're working with flash it was very much a black box you know you took pictures and you hoped the exposure was right and TTL was incredibly useful in that that position to get your guesstimate of the exposure right nearly all the time yeah. um, as soon as your cameras went to digital and you could see your results then you realize the times TTL wasn't getting it right. And those times were actually when your lighting was most interesting. Yeah. When the picture was, you know, maybe very bright and you, you know, or very dark and you just wanted a tickle of light or you wanted a lot of light for a particular effect. If you want to use creative lighting techniques like snoots, like backlighting, like yeah. inward lighting, all yeah. those things go wrong with TTL because yeah. TTL goes, oh, this doesn't look like a normal picture. And if your photos look like normal pictures, they're probably not going to be outstanding. And that's, you know, and TTL is going to try and make them look like normal pictures all the time. So when you want to create those really powerful shots, that's, I think, when the strength of, of manual shooting comes. And, you know, for those who've never tried it, you, we can't really state how easy it is to get on top of. It really is very straightforward to get on top of those techniques. So for me, I shoot 90%, 99% of my pictures in manual flash. I just use TTL on those dives when I think physically it's going to be difficult to be adjusting those strobes, maybe because it's a very task loaded dive or it's really cold. And, and actually, you know, on some of those cold dives, when you just want to shoot, you know, nice sort of macro shooting on a cold dive, it can work really well. I never shoot TTL on, on wide angle because I, ah, this is actually a really important point that I should have said earlier is TTL, typically as underwater photographers, we work with two flash guns. And most TTL systems are set up with both flash guns connected on the same cable, giving the same amount of power. Yeah. And one of the first things you learn as you start to finesse your lighting in underwater photography is you very, very rarely want your two strobes on the same power. Yeah. Because either it gives you a very, very flat, dull light, or if your camera is not parallel to your subject, which is more normal, it will give you a very bright one side of the picture and a very dark other side of the picture. Oh. And TTL is really bad for that. Whereas manual shooting um, allows you to adjust the different powers of the two strobes very easily and really be able to finesse that light and get exactly the quality of light that you want on the subject. And that probably is, is for me as important as any other reason 
for using manual flash. It's important to bear in mind, I think, that the, the camera doesn't know what your subject is. So it, it's not sentient. It, it doesn't know that you're trying to light up this coral head. Um, and, and TTL, of course, will will try and light the whole scene or will do its best attempt. And this is why sometimes you vary depending on your distance away from the coral head or whatever it is you're trying to shoot. Um, and so this is why it becomes very, very difficult, particularly in wide angle possibly, for, for mm. TTL to, to know what, what, what you want to light up. It just doesn't know. Um, and it does its yeah. best job, and generally they're very accurate. But it's inevitably it's inevitably not a system that can can work as as, as uniformly. And once you go back to manual, just we're, we're preaching about manual here. Once you're back to manual, you can control exactly how much light you want to fall on the subject, and that gives you then the creative opportunities. Absolutely. Mm. Well, just to finish off, I think it would be good for us just to just to chat about some of the times when TTL does work well. And I think TTL does work well when your subject is relatively far away and relatively parallel to the camera. Mm. Now, if, for example, you just want to shoot a scuba diver in the blue, TTL will generally do a pretty good job of that. Yep. Um, it's not going to like really reflect if schools of fish and that sort of thing, but it will do that thing. As soon as your composition becomes more interesting with, with subject matter close and far away from the, the lens, that's when TTL is going to begin to struggle a lot more. Um, I think it can work really well for kind of fish ID type shots. So if you're a kind of a scientist or a naturalist who likes documenting the diversity of life underwater, TTL can often be a very simple way of shooting that works well in that very simple scene of fish dominating the picture yep. and a bit of background around yep. it. So there are definitely places for it. But if you are like Adam and I and want to take underwater pictures that show the beauty and spectacle of the underwater world, then the sooner you transition to manual flash guns, manual control of your flash guns, the stronger your images will get. That's me done. Yeah, thanks, Alex. I think that's that's good advice. So, so from both of us, next time you're out, turn your strobes to manual and shoot away. So we'll um, say goodbye to Alex. Bye, Alex. Bye. Um, I'd like to thank you all for watching. Our sponsor today was Bunaken Oasis. Thank you very much. Um, please leave comments, add suggestions for future topics. And um, if you'd like to like this video down below in the in the YouTube comment section um, and we'll see you all next time.